Hello and welcome to Biostock Studio. We have a very exciting news for you today. Imagine waking up one morning to find your vision becoming blurry. You have been diagnosed with RVO and your doctor presents you with a very difficult choice. A needle piercing directly into your eye. The thought alone is overwhelming. But what if there was a better way? A better way that doesn't include such an invas invasive procedure. A breakthrough solution that can help you from inside out. And this is exactly what Annexing Pharmaceutical has set out to do with their biological drug candidate. ANXV. So be with me as we delve into their latest phase two proof of concept result. And I have with me today Anna Frostegord, the CSO, CMO, and even the co founder and inventor. Also, Anders Hegestrand, the CEO of the company. Very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Sorry if I'm a little bit emotional today. It's because uh, one of my young uh, friends uh, has been diagnosed by this uh, disease and it actually affects me a lot. So you already had the proof of uh, drug delivery to retina. You did uh, an imaging study with labeled uh, ANXV and now you have the results from phase two, which is very interesting. So you did uh, this uh, at retinal specialist uh, clinical centers, seven of them around the US, and uh, there were 15 patients that were recently diagnosed by, uh, uh, with RVO, and uh, 14 of them uh, were available after four months. Uh, and 12 of them have improved uh, vision or their disease were stable. So how good are these results for real? If I may start, I mean, thank you very much for the very personal introduction. Uh, so I think the results are as good as we can ever have hoped for. And this is a relatively small study. It's the first time NXV is given to patients. Uh, it is an intravenous infusion, which is very different from, like you said, sticking a needle into the eye. Uh, and we are investigating a relatively small number of patients, so we cannot expect to see fantastic, statistically significant effects, but we have the two major, or the couple of major outcomes is safety and signals of effect, and that's pretty much as much as we could have ever hoped for. Okay, you want to give some perspective on it? Oh, I just think, just to mention to you, you know, that what you've described is relatively young people can get RVO. It's not a disease of only elderly. It can happen to anyone around 50, even younger than 50. And just as you rightly described, People just have one option at the moment, have an injection into the eye. And some people respond, certain don't, don't, most of them will never regain the vision to what it was prior to RVO, which is an occlusion in, uh, in the vein, in, uh, which drains the, uh, the retina, which is a light sensitive part of the eye. And when the anti-VEGF, this kind of the medicines which one injects in the eye, they came as one of the tools for uh, ophthalmologists, eye doctors, it was considered to be a revolution because there was nothing else um, other than uh, just wait and see and hope the patients will improve by themselves. So I think to us, the, the results which we see now, not only that to me as a CMO, the safety uh, is extremely important, right? So we don't see any safety signals and it's a good tolerability in these patients. And just as you mentioned, it's the first time after our phase one in the healthy volunteers, we actually investigate uh, doses and higher doses in phase one in patients. It's extremely important. So that is important to me. But just to continue on on the anti-VGF, we try to investigate something and give potentially to this patient in another revolution, not, not the anti-VGF into the eye, but giving them, just as you mentioned, potential to receive an infusion into the vein, which is a systemic administration of the eye, that potentially would change the, the disease, uh, disease um, development. So 
in the best of divisions that if we would in give them INXV to these patients that they would be cured. That is in the best of the world. But I think, so we, we are very excited about the results and that is not to say that is an efficacy study. I think it's very important for, you know, for, the, for, also for the listeners to understand this is a study which is a proof of concept done on the resources and timeline and looking at these patients. So I think it's as good as it gets under the, uh, under the context it's been, uh, it's been done. Good that you already went into the second question because um, on the pre press release uh, it was said that seven out of these 12 N received none and five of them received only a single dose of anti-VGF which usually they have to receive one per month in several months uh, so uh, and I really liked your comment there and I have a question there the findings were accompanied by fewer than expected anti-VGF injections uh, can you explain a little bit about that? Uh, why did you and what was you expecting about that? And the, is it like uh, dependent on the dose because you use two, four, and six milligram uh, of? Uh, I mean, we substance? we announce our top line results, which focus on on several parameters, right? The one of them is safety, one of them is thickness of the of the retina which is uh, by computer tomography used by physician to use uh, to to inject anti vgf we also use something which is a visual acuity and one of the other parameters which was part of our top line data is, is of course the number of anti vgf injections within this time which is four months and you're rightly saying that one would expect them to receive uh, more injections it's it's very different in the studies to uh, to 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 say that patients which are data available from the clinical uh, trials, the patients which, which were looked into those uh, publicly available information, they are not even as severely sick as ours. We included patients who had more degree of ischemia in, in their retina. So, so we, expect, we expect those patients to have a signal in the retina which constantly leads to VGF production. So, so we expected this patient to be needing uh, VEGF. But even looking back into the studies and looking in the real life how patients are treated uh, with, v with RVO, even with a less degree of ischemia, one would expect them to receive in the beginning of the disease very intensive anti-VGF treatment. That is to say about four injections within those four months. And even the indication for the main tool, the ILEA, which is one of the anti-VGF uh, um, drugs which are available, it actually does have an indication of having at least four initial monthly injections in the beginning of the and of This the was decided by the, the patients of the ophthalmologists, right? Yes, that was very much uh, in our protocol in this proof of concept by discretion of the ophthalmologist. So ophthalmologists had had a choice to decide if the patient need, uh, needed anti-VGF, but there was not a, a very strict requirement per protocol. It has to do with safety. They had to be able to give them the But at the long run, uh, the purpose is to replace uh, anti-VGF? That is a million dollar question, very literally <laughs> speaking, right? It's, it's, uh, it's hard to tell. Uh, I think the, what we have done here is that we treated patients without having them having had any anti-VGF. So they are what we call treatment naive. So we start treatment them with uh, an exin, and then they can receive anti-VEGF if they need to, uh, or if the doctor feels it's needed. Uh, and then in the long run, I think anti-VEGFs may be needed to reduce the swelling. You have to remember that patients come in and they have a lot of VEGF in their, in their retina. And then if you want to remove the VEGF, which is driving the swelling and the mm -hmm. vision loss, maybe one anti-VEGF injection will be needed to reduce the swelling rapidly because the patient wants to see better as soon as possible. But I think the role of the next thing is really to be able to change the course of the disease beyond that first anti-VEGF injection. And the idea is that we will, we will, we will challenge the use of anti-VEGF uh, going forward because it's, it's, will be, it will be a very good thing for the patient not receiving intraocular injections as well as, a, as a savings for the society. 
So how do you plan to use this current data in discussion with uh, potential licensing partners or do you plan to take this uh, to the market all by yourself? Well, that's another million dollar question. Right? <laughs> <coughs> so uh, the plan is to, to seek partners. We are already talking to multiple companies about potential partnering. Obviously, we need to understand how we would like it to move forward. So we do design a phase 2B study, which will be a, a, a efficacy study on statistical basis. Uh, and that's our plan to design the study, to talk to regulators about how they think the development program, including including phase 2B and phase 3, should can look like to get their, their let's, let's say, interim approval of that plan. And that's a strength also when we talk to potential partners, because they also want to understand what the regulators think about the role of an NXV in, the, in this disease treatment. So that's, that's what we plan to do. Um, and again, we do work on business development on a daily basis right now. And this will happen in US? Well, the phase 2B may be a global study. I mean, we, we, don't, we don't think we will limit uh, a study to the US. But again, the primary goal is to have a partner who, who would uh, pay for and run the development together with us. And it's their choice in the end where they, where they want to go. But it makes sense to do a study which has both US sites as well as European and maybe in other territories as well. Yeah, so there are uh, lots of potential with ANXV. It's not only for RVO. And uh, although it's not traditionally classified as checkpoint inhibitor, it can be used in uh, immunotherapy, right? So what, what is your goal? What are your plans with NXV? I think we've been, for the past decade, you know, we've been struggling, right? We have a luxury and at the same a difficulty making the right choice. We're a tiny company, we have limited resources, we have a lot of knowledge in terms of the data, we also understand clinical potential. So we've been really spending enormous amount of time thinking and rethinking and making arguments for one or the other decision. And I think it's very unusual because we really take it very seriously, the potential and also how do we build the value with what we have. And that also reflects in our very um, you know, stringent choices of going into RVO because we think we can manage it. It's an ophthalmology indication, it's an issue indication. We have proven it now since we could complete and initiate and lead and complete a study in the US post pandemic, that was not an easy feat. But at the same time, you know, we, of course, everyone always tells you to focus, but I think we have an obligation, uh, ethical obligation for science, patients, shareholders, society to get the best out of INXV. We've done the phase one study on the healthy volunteers, so we have a, a basis which, which allows us to build not only an RVO, but also another indication. So we have uh, announced uh, that we strategically decided to go and, and, and uh, investigate our path forward for an INXV as a monotherapy in cancer. So we're working on that in collaboration with Karolinski also. So we're looking at the way stratifying patients, not just blindly doing the study, but really finding the way forward, which de-risk development gives us potential answers on efficacy. But not only that, we also um, looking into um, by um, using our INXV molecule, the one which you can be is monotherapy in cancer, as checkpoint inhibitor and RVO, as a carrier, as a carrier of a very toxic substances like chemotherapy. So we go in something which is very in vogue, if you can call it that way, in biotech, it's uh, ADCs, right? The antibody drug conjugates. In our case, it's a protein drug conjugate, but we are making small steps but forward to, to build this value, to, to look at this. And it also has to be seen that um, against the background that we have a very strong patent portfolio, which is also unusual for biotech with the recombinantly produced protein. So, so we, we, we build as much as data with resources and time what we have to present, I think, the best out of what we are giving. We, I think sometimes we say that we see each other as a custodians of something beautiful, right? It's, it's beautiful biology, it's a beautiful molecule, it will be a medicine, new medicine. It only remains to be seen where. But as you said, you have the luxury of uh, being able to apply to many different yeah. uh, areas. If I, if I may add, I mean, yeah, the, sure. also in ophthalmology, there's other indications which are huge, uh, which is diabetic retinopathy and, and macular degeneration. And there is a role potentially also for NXV in those diseases. So we have a ophthalmology focus which goes beyond RVO. But then we also have, right. have opportunities in cancer. So how do you prioritize this and how can you apply the results? 
uh, to the value of the company? This is my last question, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, safety is safety profile is very good, uh, which which obviously applies to all other indications we may move into. Uh, I think the for treatment of, of ophthalmology uh, disease, ophthalmology diseases like diabetic retinopathy or vas um, macular degeneration, we may need to develop a different delivery mode. We may have to be using a subcutaneous. And drug delivery mode to achieve that because these are chronic diseases, they are slow in development and, and long term. Uh, so that's a development we may want to leverage uh, and that's if we succeed with a different delivery mode, let's say subcutaneous, that will also have a huge impact on moving to other indications. And about the market and the value of the company? <laughs> well, that's a tricky question as always. Uh, the, I mean, the, the, the market in our view alone is approaching $20 billion, right, which is a huge number. Uh, it's driven by the repeated uh, anti-VEGF injections, which is expensive medicine. Of course, if we start treating patients with NXV together with one or maybe no uh, anti-VEGF, of course, that will change the market dynamics completely. So the market will change and I, I think there's a, there's a it's a, it's, a, it's a huge opportunity for uh, market uh, expansion uh, or end reduction and we take a lot of, of the existing market and anyone can speculate about the company value. Wow, very, very exciting and I personally looking really forward to, to see the results. Uh, thank you so much for coming to our studio today and uh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.